Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with Let's Talk Money. Welcome to another one of these informal videos. And, and you know I love these types of videos because I can record one and get these stock picks out the same day inst instead of waiting a week to do that editing. And today we're updating our 2020 dividend portfolio with three dividend stocks I'm buying right now, right here in May. Three stocks all with dividend yields above 5% and potentially 30% or more in upside returns. So for those of you new to the channel, we started a dividend portfolio on M1 Finance with $1,200 in January. And I'm adding three stocks to it each month. The portfolio is down about 11% so far this year, right around that market return. But I'd say pretty damn good considering a couple of those early picks were real dogs. So we've got six stocks in the green here, including our Vanguard Real Estate Fund, that's ticker VNQ, is up 14%. Our bond fund, the Vanguard BSV, is what we're holding our cash in until we invest in new stocks each month. That one's up 4.5% on the year. And we've got a few other funds giving us that diversification and yield. Here at the other end of the list, though, are the nightmares with dogs like Ford and Carnival Corporation down 70% since January. And while the sell-off has been brutal in these names, I still think they're solid businesses that should be around for the recovery and can eventually be some great producers, so I wouldn't be selling them at this point. I love the auto invest tool on M1 Finance, the ability to, to rebalance your portfolio and invest any free cash without doing anything at all, all, all automatically done by the platform. You just put in your percentage of the portfolio that you want in each stock, then M1 is going to help you keep those exposures. So it's a great way for that big picture portfolio view. I'll leave a link in the description below, so put it on your list if you're looking for places to invest your money. If you were around last year for that dividend challenge, you remember we sold and protected a lot of our portfolio at the end of April, really on those sell in May fears, and it paid off. We were able to protect the portfolio from a 7% drop in stocks over the month and take advantage of those lower prices in June. Now, the sell in May phenomenon is just a trend in stocks where the summer months tend to be the worst for losses. So May through September, that four-month period, are four of the five worst returns with a 60-year average return even being negative in the period. Now, it doesn't happen every year that stocks sell off in May, but it is a surprisingly solid trend that's held up for decades. A lot of it is really just a combination of slow summer trading. So a lot of the market is out on vacation and low stock volumes tends to amplify those swings in prices. Also, stocks are coming off those first few months that maybe got a boost from those high fourth quarter earnings and, and optimistic investors. So the summer months just tend to be a natural time to, to retrench on those prices. Of course, the question is, what do stocks do this year in 2020? After the fastest stock market crash in history, do stocks buck that seasonal trend and just keep rising? And on that, I'm going to take the cautious route for our 2020 dividend portfolio. Yes, stocks are still about 15% off their February highs, but what a run-up we've seen off those lows. I mean, with nearly 30 million people unemployed, corporate earnings looking like they're going to take that double-digit hit in the second quarter, and, and just a weak rest of the year in the cards, just 15% off those all-time highs is really amazing. And it might be more than a little overpriced. This chart shows the forward price-to-earnings ratio for each sector, as well as the overall market ratio in dark blue and compares it to the 10-year average P.E. ratio in green. And you can see most of the sectors are trading way above that long-term average. So we're seeing stocks at an expensive level compared to that 10-year P.E. ratio. But just look at the market average for the S&P 500. Stocks in the index are trading at a price of 17 times the earnings analysts expect to see over the next year. That's 15% more expensive than the long-term average of 15 times forward earnings. So the idea here is that while the market is still trading a little below those all-time highs we saw in February, it's not like stocks are cheap. There is a real possibility that we get some kind of a summer seasonal weakness in the market, as well as the risk that the virus infection rate pops up back again and just scares those investors into a panic. That means the three dividend stocks I'm buying in May are going to have that eye to safety and strong cash flows. The three stocks I know can hold up against a market sell-off and still send me those dividend checks. Now, those of you in the nation know I'm not about to just drop a couple of stock picks and call it a day. I want you to know what I'm looking for, how I'm picking these stocks so I can retire to some sandy beach someday and, and you can still find those stocks to buy. Your bowtie buddy wants his drinks with the umbrella in them. So like we've been talking about over the last month, I'm first looking at a company's balance sheet here to, to make sure that it's got that survivability. And that's primarily going to be making sure that it has enough cash on hand to cover those near-term costs and the interest payments. Now, for that sell in May possibility, I'm also looking for deep value plays. Okay, stocks trading at a steep discount to their fair value. So, so if the market does sink again, these stocks don't have that far to go. So here we're looking more at those the healthcare and financial sector. Because if we go back to that chart, 
those are the, really the only two sectors there on the far right that are trading at or below their long-term PE ratios. So these two sectors are trading on average at a discount right now. Finally, I'm also going to be looking at some possible contrarian plays right here. Uh, so sectors of the economy that the market or other investors are selling. Here we're talking about real estate, which especially uh, healthcare, which is sold off, but it's still a great opportunity in that, that long-term view of medical spending. Uh, I'm also looking at energy stocks, which have been absolutely decimated on oil prices, but, but I think as people start hitting the road again and gasoline demand ramps up, we could see some real support in oil, and that's going to be a rocket ship under some of these stocks. So that's what I'm looking for for our stocks to buy in May, and what I think will do well even if that tough summer market comes. And now I want to highlight three stocks that fit this theme and that I'm buying for our 2020 dividend portfolio there on M1 Finance. First is American International Group, ticker AIG, the $21 billion insurer with a 5.5% dividend yield. Now, those of you in the nation will remember, we highlighted AIG last month when we looked at those 10 highest return stocks, according to analysts. So these are the 10 stocks in the S&P 500 with target price estimates the most above their current price. And there's AIG with a median target of 105% above its current price. And why I like the stock in this list is because it's one of the few that isn't solely a rebound play. If you look at this list, a lot of these stocks here are just ones that have been hit the hardest. They might not necessarily be primed for a rebound, but maybe analysts just haven't adjusted their price targets. So it looks like these stocks have huge triple digit potential. Now that's not to say that AIG doesn't deserve some of that 60% price drop or that it's ready to zoom higher immediately. Uh, as an insurer, it was taking a lot of the risk out of commercial property and casualty. So, so when any big unexpected event like that comes, list comes along, those actuarial tables just don't cut it. And the company is going to be losing some money. But the one good thing about this stock sell-off is that it wasn't a financial crisis, right? A lot of the banks, the financial companies, and AIG were well capitalized going into this. So there's really no risk to that dividend, which is a solid 5.5% yield just to sit around and wait on this stock. And I think this one easily gets to 35 or 40 by the end of the year. For our next stock, I've been looking at opportunities in the real estate investment trust lately, and I think this one is it. Global Medical REIT, ticker GMRE, is a small cap healthcare REIT paying a 7.9% dividend yield and 30% down from its February high. Now, I like to call this one the venture capital of healthcare facilities because it's taking that opportunistic approach, acquiring leased clinics and facilities to, to take advantage of that trend in healthcare. The company owns 101 buildings, most on triple net leases, which means the tenant pays all costs. And the portfolio has an average of almost nine years in lease terms, so these tenants are locked in and it's one of the strongest trends in the economy. Now, that strategy had just started paying off with a 50% return on the shares over the year to February before all this hit, and the sell-off could be a great opportunity for those long-term investors. Next here is our contrarian play, and I was looking at Chevron, ticker CVX, but we already have that large integrated oil company with Exxon in the portfolio, so instead, I'm adding Phillips 66, ticker PSX here for, for that 6% dividend yield. So while I do believe we see some support in oil prices as we get further into the summer driving season and people just get back on the road in general, I'm not quite ready to go all in on a lot of these oil names. Okay, Even on a rebound of, say, $30 a barrel, you're still looking at some bankruptcies in the exploration and, and production side, especially in some of those smaller names. Now, what I like about Philips here is that it's closer to the customer than your other large integrated companies like, like Chevron and ExxonMobil. Okay, Philips' business is mostly in refining, so turning that oil into gasoline and then retail selling the gas to customers. So with all the oil storage near its peak and production only coming down gradually, I think we're first going to see strength at these downstream names like, like Philips first. Okay, you're going to see drivers start buying more gas, and that's going to pull more demand from the refiners, which is going to mean more oil needs to be pumped through the pipelines and out of storage. It's only after that pull on demand all the way from the customer to storage that you're going to see a significant rebound in prices and in the companies pulling it out of the ground. So, so initially, I want to be positioned in that first stage closer to the customers. Now, besides those refinery assets and the retail stations, Philips also has midstream pipeline assets and a chemicals business, which really sets it apart from those other refiners. I love the diversification here, and it's got a solid balance sheet with enough cash flow to make it through this whole mess. Click on the video to the right for a portfolio of monthly dividend stocks and cash flow every single month. Five dividend funds and three stocks that pay you to invest every month. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.